From the lakes of Minnesota to the hills of Tennessee, across the plains of Texas, from sea to shining sea, from Detroit down to Houston and New York to LA, where there's pride in every American heart, and it's time we stand and say. I love these hangers. I love a hanger. There's nothing like a hanger. You get out of the plane, you walk over, and we have massive crowds. We don't have to turn so many away, but there are a lot of people still trying to get in. Should we wait or should we start right now? Start. We start. It's a great crowd. Oh. Montana, to me, is a very big and powerful state, I can tell you that. At least it will be after Matt Rosendale becomes your senator. He's great. But I'm thrilled to be here in Montana with thousands of loyal, hardworking, incredible American patriots. Hard to believe I'm saying this because it was an incredible time. Less than two years ago, but almost two years ago, right? That was some day, that was some evening, that was some period. That was a movement like we've never, ever seen before. And here we are again. It's going to be like, doesn't seem long, but it flies. You know, when you're having a good time and when you're doing a good job, time flies, right? Time flies. And in just 19 days, the people of this incredible state are going to send Matt Rosendale to the U.S. Senate to protect your jobs and protect your Second Amendment, which is under siege. This, I would think, is a very big Second Amendment place. I wouldn't want to be the one that walks into your house and says, give me that gun. Right? Nobody has the courage to do that. But Matt is going to protect your Second Amendment, and he's going to defend your borders, and we're doing a good job in those borders with the worst laws you've ever seen. And we are making America great again together. Really are. This is truly an incredible time for our country. The unemployment rate just fell to the lowest level in over 50 years. Think of that. More Americans are now working than ever before. Here in Montana, household incomes have reached an all-time high. Think of that. Think of that. And we watch Montana. We watch your miners. We watch your loggers, your ranchers, your farmers. We watch Montana. 
And you know, two years ago, you watched over me because we won this state by a lot. Right? That was one of those quickies. I love those days. You know, the polls close. Polls have just closed in the state of Montana. Trump has won Montana. You know, it's like. They say it because when it's that big, they announce it within seconds. We like the, we like the, it's just a flowing. They do comma. They don't do a period, they do a comma. Trump has won Montana. But you've been great to me. We're also taking care of your veterans. You have a lot of veterans in Montana. And our military, you know, we've rebuilt and are rebuilding our military will soon be more powerful than ever before. And hopefully we won't have to use it. But there's something about having it. All of a sudden they say, OK, let's forget about that. That's the way life works, isn't it? We're going to have the most powerful military by far that we've ever had. And a lot of it's already coming, those brand new, beautiful planes, those incredible stealth F-35s. The, you have the F-35, you have the F-18s, the super dupers, the Hornets. We have them all. We got them coming left and right. And you know the great thing? It's nothing more important than the military, but we build them all right here in the USA. We don't send them to other countries to be built. We build them right here. We have the best military equipment in the world. We build the best. There's nothing even close. Best missiles, best planes, best ships, best everything. We build them here, and there's nothing like best submarines. Submarines, we're so far ahead of everybody. Forget it. Under Republican leadership, America is booming. America is thriving, and America is winning because we are finally putting America first again. It's America first. You know that. We're putting America first. You haven't heard that for a long time, for many, many decades. You haven't heard. Just last week, we achieved another historic victory for the American people in a beautiful ceremony at the White House. We proudly swore in the newest member of the United States Supreme Court, Justice Brett Kavanaugh. And those Democrats treated him badly. Very unfair. That was an unfair deal. From the second the Supreme Court vacancy opened, Democrats were on a heartless campaign of political and personal destruction. It was disgraceful. Before he was even chosen, before I even knew who I was going to pick, they were saying horrible things about my candidate. I said, I haven't picked anyone yet. They're great people. That was terrible. What they did was terrible. And what they did to Brett Kavanaugh and his beautiful family is a national disgrace that will not be soon forgotten. Remember that. And come Election Day, Americans will remember Kavanaugh, and they will remember all sorts of other things because that was a shameful act. And there are many other shameful acts, including what they're doing to our border by saying, we're not going to give you the laws that you need to protect our country. But we're taking it, and we're doing it, and we have great things happening. This will be an election of Kavanaugh, the caravan, law and order, and common sense. That's what it's going to be. It's going to be a, an election of those things. Law and order, Kavanaugh. Remember common sense. And remember, it's going to be an election of the caravan. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. And now we're starting to find out, and I won't say it 100 percent. I'll put a little tiny question mark at the end. But we're probably not going to need it. But we have the fake news back there. <laughs> fake news. But a lot of money has been passing through people 
to come up and try and get to the border by election day because they think that's a negative for us. Number one, they're being stopped. And number two, regardless, that's our issue. So this is the problem with them. They have one thing, they stick together. They vote together. They're bad politicians. They have horrible policy. They hate ICE. They don't like our military. They don't like our vets. They're always fighting us on that. They have lousy policy. The one thing, they stick together. But they wanted that caravan. And there are those that say that caravan didn't just happen. It didn't just happen. A lot of reasons that caravan, 4,000 people. But uh, I just want to thank the Mexican government because they're stopping it, hopefully, before it ever gets to Mexico. As you know, I'm willing to send the military to defend our southern border, if necessary. All caused because of the illegal immigration onslaught brought by the Democrats because they refuse to acknowledge or to change the laws. They like it. They also figure everybody coming in is going to vote Democrat. You know. Hey, they're not so stupid when you think about it, right? But they are crazy, and the crazy Democrats refuse to support any form of border security legislation to fix our absolutely horrible, old-fashioned, loophole-ridden immigration laws. We have the worst laws anywhere in the world. We have the dumbest laws anywhere in the world. Somebody comes in and we say, uh, excuse me, a foot hits the ground. You know, if a foot hits the ground, we're not allowed to say, hey, go back. Every other country in the world, they say, go back. Can't come in, sorry. A foot hits the ground. We have to, by law, with these horrible people that are making their own rulings, having nothing to do with our Constitution, we have to take those people in, even if they're criminals. And we have hardened criminals coming in. You think those people are perfect? They're not perfect. You have some hardened, bad people coming in. And by law, we have to take their name, and then we have to release. It's called catch and release. You ever hear this one? You catch them, you find out about them, even if you find out bad things, you catch them and you release them. And then you say, come back for a court case. There's only a problem. There's not enough judges in the world to take care of it. And I will say, I have caused the problem. I'm taking full blame. You know why? Everyone's like in shock. It's my, hey, look, fake news. It's my problem. I caused it. Because I have created such an incredible economy. I have created so many jobs. I've made this country with you so great that everybody wants to come in. So they're all pouring in or trying to. So with the worst laws in the world, we're doing a hell of a job. But we've made our country strong. We've made our country respected, and people want to come in. Most importantly, what we have to do, we need votes, meaning we need Republicans to vote. You know, you keep hearing we have a majority. We have a majority that if somebody has a cold, if somebody's not feeling well, we lose our majority. That's how it is. It's not a big, we have like almost like identical. We have to have more votes so we can put in strong, conservative, Republican, but common sense. It's not even Republican conservative. It's common sense policies. It's common sense. That's why we have a lot of Democrats that support us, frankly. We have a lot of the Democrats that aren't crazy. They're intelligent. Because the Democrat Party has gone so far left that nobody knows what to do. It's become radical resistance. You ever see their signs? Resist. They say, what are you going to resist? I don't know. <laughs> Do you ever see when the fake news interviews them? And then they try and cut it, but they never, they'll go to a person holding a sign who gets paid by Soros or somebody, right? That's what happens. Well, did you see with, with now Justice Kavanaugh, did you see, and by the way, also with Justice Neil Gorsuch, how good is he? That's a great two people. But did you see the signs? 
They're brand new. They're beautiful, the black and white signs. Everybody has the same size, right from the finest printer in Washington. You think the people, those are not signs made in the basement. They're all identical. And I pointed that out, and the next day, everybody had signs that looked like they were made in the basement. I didn't see any of the black and white ones. It's a whole, hey, look, there's a lot of rigged things going on in this country. You know about that. There are a lot of rigged things going on in that. Just ask Bernie Sanders. You think things are rigged, Bernie? You think things are rigged, Bernie? You could ask me, too. I could tell you about rigging. I'll tell you what. But we fight like nobody ever fought before. You know what we do? We fight. And we fight, and we win, and we fight harder than anybody ever fought. And then they say, oh, it's obstruction. It's obstruction. If you fight back today, it's called obstruction. No, no, no. We fight back. Call it whatever the hell you want. We fight back. Structure. You know, I just walked in, and a big, strong guy grabbed me. And he was almost crying. And it happens every time and many times. And he said, Sir, Mr. President, thank you so much for saving our country. And, and you know, now I've, I hear it all the time, those exact words, thank you for saving our country. And at first I had to think about it months ago. I really had to think about it. You see what we did with taxes, with, forget taxes, with so many things more important the taxes, although those big tax cuts, they did come in handy, didn't they? Everybody benefited from that. But regulation, so many things, you add it all up, and they say, thank you very much, Mr. President, for saving our country. Well, the truth is, we have all together, because this has been a movement like we've never seen before in this country, like probably almost every country, they've never seen a movement like what happened with us in 2016. And we all together, not me, I'm a spokesperson. By the way, how have I done? Have I done anything? <laughs> I was speaking to a big politician the other day. It was sort of funny, and he was great. He's a great guy. But he was trying to make a point. He wanted me to do something a certain way. He said, sir, I've won five elections. I've run eight times. So I've won, sir, five. I know what I'm doing. I'm a professional. I've been doing this for a long time. So think of it. He's, he runs eight times. Sir, I won five elections. I said, well, you got me there. I ran once, and I won one election, but it's the presidency, right? That's right. <laughs> the presidency. It's the presidency. That's true. Think of it. We're one for one. We're going to soon be two for two, and that's going to be it. Although a lot of the fake news said that he's not going to stop at eight years. He's going longer. We'll never take it away from him. This is like the group of fake. First, they say he doesn't know what he's doing. Perhaps he's incompetent. He doesn't know what he's doing. It's terrible. It's terrible. Then two minutes later, say, He's got it for eight years. He's going to take it for long. You can't have both. You can only go one way or the other. You can't do both. Now, eight years is going to be fine, right? Eight years is going to be fine. It's all the time we need. That's all the time we need to make America great again. Make America great again. Is that, is that maybe the greatest slogan in the history of runs? You remember Hillary's slogan? That was the worst slogan. She paid like a million dollars for some guy to make this slogan. And after I dissected it at one speech, they changed it the next day. <laughs> Come together or some, some terrible. Come together. Oh, she's a great unifier, right? Great. She's a great unifier. Crooked Hillary is a great unifier. It is incredible, the deep state, where they don't even look at her. Isn't it incredible? Think of it. 33,000 emails. She gets a subpoena. 
from the United States Congress. Forget about all the other things. Forget about, and you can never forget about Benghazi, ever. But forget about everything else. Never forget Benghazi. But forget about all the other things. 33,000 emails. He gets a subpoena. Not like a subpoena from you or you or that young person right back there. A subpoena from the United States Congress. She gets it. Then she deletes 33,000 emails. And she acid washes. She acid washes. This way, it's a very expensive process. Never used. It's never used because it costs so much. It's called acid washing. It's called uh, bleach bed. It's called the five different names. But I like acid wash because that really says it. She acid washes 33,000 so that nobody can have a fire. And But they're around someplace. I think there may be. Maybe they're at the State Department. The State Department. We have a great man now at the State Department. Mike Pompeo. But maybe they're at the State Department. They could very well be at the Department of Justice. You can believe that whole deal. But we're just being quiet. We're being quiet. You know why? There's been no collusion. Can you imagine? Think of this. I was on the plane before. I told somebody. Let's say we're losing the state of Montana. That'll never happen. And I get an urgent call from my people in Montana, and I'm in New York, or I'm in Washington, and they say, sir, sir, we're losing the state of Montana. Is there anything you can do? Can you imagine me saying, oh, I don't know what to do. Gee, let's call the Russians. Maybe they can help. Can you believe? No, can you believe the stupidity of this? Let's call the Russians. If I ever called the Russians, the first one to know about it would be the state of Montana, and they wouldn't be too happy. Can you imagine? Let's call the Russians. It's a disgrace. It was an excuse made by the Democrats for losing an election that, frankly, they should win because the Electoral College, remember, I couldn't get 270. There was no way to 270. You need 270. There was no, I went to, that's exactly right, 306. I went. That's right. You heard how many times you hear? There is no way. So I went to Maine. I love Maine, by the way. One vote. Got one. One. So I went to Maine four or five times. I love the people of Maine. And I ended up winning that one, but I didn't need it because we won Michigan and Wisconsin and Pennsylvania and a lot of states. And a lot of states. No, I'll tell you what, it, it was an exciting, it was an exciting time. And next time, Democrats are going to learn where they have to run. You got to run in the right places. These were not great competitors, but they were fine. Actually, they were more effective, in my opinion, after the election than before the election. Does that make any sense? You know, that to me makes a lot of sense. Wise guys, the Democrats have turned I love you, too. Who said that? Who said that? Who said that? It's finally a woman. You know, I get it from the men all the time. And so far, every guy that said I love you, they're just not my type. I finally heard it from a woman. Thank you. Thank you. And look at all the women for Trump signs. Here we go again. It's the same thing. Everyone says, but will he get the women? There are, you know, these uh, fakers on television, the pundits, you know, real geniuses. They've really done well in predicting me. He's never going to run. He has too good a life. He's just doing it for fun. He'll never run, but he's having a good time. I said, that's a good time. So I run. Then September, one by one, we knock them off, knock them off, knock them off. Remember? 18 people, 17 opponents, very talented opponents in many cases. Not in all cases, but in many cases. I remember Charles Krauthammer, and he was talking. Good. Well, he treated you better than he treated me. That's okay. But he was talking about the field. I hadn't entered. And he said, why would he do this? This is the single greatest field of Republicans ever assembled for an election. And I looked at my wife. By the way, how good is our first lady? Very good. 
Oh, she doing good. People love our first lady. Look at all the signs. We love our first lady. We love our first lady. Just came back from Africa. Just came back from Africa. And she got great people thought she they love her. They she went into areas that it was sad because such poverty. She went in with her arms wide open. And the New York Times and some others, all they could talk about, she wore a certain hat. And they said it represented a colonialization. And everybody was trying to figure, and I think it came out of Los Angeles. I think they actually bought it in Los Angeles, which is such a but they And they came down quickly. Great, great people, great pilots, great, great pilots. And she was cool. She was cool. I did have to, once I found out everything, I asked, how was she? Was she scared? No, sir. What was she like? She was so cool, we couldn't believe it. Everybody else had cloth on their face, and I probably would have also. Cloth that was water, right? Wet on their face. She sat there. Hey, what else is new? That's the way she is. She's a great first lady. She's doing an incredible job. And you think it's easy for her to be a first lady. Not so easy. She's done an incredible job. But Charles Krauthammer, so he said, well, he said, there's never been a field like this. And I actually went to my wife. I said, you know, a very smart man just said there's never been a field so talented as this. But one by one, and they are, and now a lot of them are friends of mine, almost all of them are friends of mine. You know, you go through wars together, and then if you're smart, and if they're smart, you get along. I have great relationships. Ted Cruz has become a friend of mine. He's doing great in Texas. Marco Rubio, Chris Christie, Mike Huckabee, he was in there at the beginning. Remember, he got up and he said, I don't know. What you guys are wasting your time for? Nobody's going to beat Trump. Why are you doing this? You can't beat him. In fact, you remember he said, in fact, I just went out and bought a Trump tie, and I'm dropping out after this debate. But none of you guys are going to beat Trump. That was Mike Huckabee. That was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. It was very good for this debate because I was so impressed with what he said. I didn't think about it. Now, Mike is great. We, have, we had such great people. We had such great people and a lot of talented people. And the end result is this is where we are, and we're doing a lot of good. But the Democrats have truly turned into an angry mob bent on destroying anything or anyone in their path. And your senator is one of them. Let me tell you, your senator is disgraceful what he did. This election, you will decide which party is in control of Congress. That's true. And if they win, even if they win the House, it's going to be just fighting, fighting, fighting. It's going to be, will be, you love my hair? Thank you. She knows what to say. She knows how to make me happy. I love your hair. Well, the one thing that has been really great about this whole Endeavors. So I used to say, he wears a hairpiece. He wears a hair. They don't say that anymore. They, these people have seen me under every condition known to men. I haven't heard that one in over a year. You know, when you're walking around and the wind is going crazy and you're inspecting like I did the other day, the incredible hurricane is horrible. Hurricane Michael that devastated Florida and Georgia and Alabama got hit hard. And then a couple of weeks before, and Michael got a piece of them too. But a couple of weeks before, I went to North Carolina, South Carolina. You look at what happened in a little piece of Virginia. Uh, and you walk around in those conditions, you can't fake it. You can't fake it. So that's one good thing. Nobody ever says that anymore. That's one of the, might be one of the best things that's happened to me in a long time. Because my whole life, they said, is it or isn't it? Barbara Walters interviewed me. Do you mind if I play with your hair? Remember that? 
And then numerous people have done that, but that's okay. But the choice could not be more clear. Democrats produce mobs. Republicans produce jobs. By the way, this is the most beautiful sky. Well, big sky. I guess there's a reason for everything, right? No, I just, I got out and I'm looking. I've been here many times, but I got out and I'm looking. I said, that really is big sky. That's beautiful. It's not only big, it's really beautiful sky. Someday, one of you will explain exactly why, but that is a beautiful, beautiful, big sky. But Nancy Pelosi, crying Chuck Schumer, and the radical Democrats, they want to raise your taxes. They want to impose socialism on our incredible nation, make it Venezuela, because that's what's going to happen. They want to take away your health care because you won't be able to have it. Our country won't be able to afford it destroy your Second Amendment, and throw open your borders to deadly drugs and vicious gangs, because plenty of them are coming across, and a lot of drugs. Democrats have become the party of crime. It's true. Who would believe you could say that? And nobody even challenges it. Nobody, you know, who would believe? I said, started a couple of months ago. I said, you know, They've really become the party of crime. I said, I'm going to put that in. I'm going to say that when I make speeches. Nobody's ever challenged it. Maybe they have. Who knows? I have to always say that because then they'll say, they did actually challenge it. They'll put like, then they'll say, he gets a Pinocchio. So maybe they did challenge it, but not very much. It's become really, they have become the party of crime because of what they do. They would rather devastate American communities than defend America's borders. The Democrat Party has become too extreme to be trusted with power. Their radical policies are a danger to your family and to your country. If you want to drain the swamp, you must defeat the Democrats, and you must defeat Senator John Tester. I mean, he's a super liberal. How do you? I, I know you people. I won by a fortune of votes, right? Like many, many, many votes. And I know, I know you. You know me. I know you. How the hell did you ever elect that guy? How did you pull that off? So we're thrilled to be joined tonight by somebody who's been working with me and an incredible guy, a great human being, and a very talented senator, but somebody that loves you and he loves the country, Senator Steve Daines. Steve. He is a great guy. I'll tell you what. He is, uh, you know, the strong, silent type. They're the ones I like the best. I want to be that way someday. <laughs> now, Steve Daines has been, he's been a great representative. He loves, he loves this day. I also want you to go and vote for an incredible Montana leader, somebody that's gone to Congress and in a short period of time, one of the most respected people in Congress, Greg Gianforte. Hey, Greg, come up. Come up here. Let me just say, on behalf of all of Montana, Mr. President, thank you for giving us hope again. He's so smart. You know, we've had people, you're on live television all over the place. 
And we've had people get up, speak for 20, 25 minutes. And these guys are going crazy. That's not the deal. But Greg is smart. And by the way, never wrestle him. You understand that? Never. Any guy that can do a body slam, he's my kind. Who's my guy? I shouldn't say this because there's nothing to be embarrassed about. So I was in Rome with a lot of the leaders from other countries, talking about all sorts of things. And I heard about it. And we endorsed Greg very early. But I had heard that he body slammed a reporter. And he was way up. And he was way up. And I said, oh, this was like the day of the election or just before. And I said, oh, this is terrible. He's going to lose the election. Then I said, well, wait a minute. I know Montana pretty well. I think it might help him. And it did. Now, he's a great guy. Tough cookie. Greg's opponent, Kathleen Williams, is a radical far left Democrat. She's going to be voting with Nancy Pelosi and Maxine Waters, the great Maxine Waters. That's another beauty, isn't it? Williams wants to massively raise your taxes, and she supports Pelosi's cap and trade tax, which is a disaster. And it would kill the Montana coal industry that we all rebuilt together in a very short period of time. Any miners in the audience, please? How are you guys happy, right? Better believe it. It's coming back. Clean coal. I say beautiful, clean coal. And we have more of it than anybody. And Kathleen Williams supports open borders. She opposes the wall, which we've started, and we've done a lot of work on it, but I'd like to get it done quickly. Give us the money, and we'll do it fast. But we've started it. We got a billion six, a billion six, and a billion six. And I want to get it finished. We need it now. And by the way, if this scene, if this scene of people pouring up if that doesn't make people want to build a wall, you know, in 2006, all these people, just about all of them, they wanted a wall. They know it's the right thing. They just don't want to give us the victory. It's not like Schumer says, oh, gee, you have it over. Israel has a wall. Bibi Netanyahu, think of it. He said it worked 99.9% .9 their wall. They have a big wall. It's in the form of a very tough fence. But they have a wall. And Schumer knows this, and Nancy Pelosi knows this, but they just don't want to give us the victory. I know for a fact. They said, you know what? We can't let them have the wall, because that would be another campaign promise fulfilled. But I've done so many campaigns. I'm so far ahead. But, but we've started the wall, and it's moving, and we're going to get it. But get me some Republican votes, please. Williams voted in favor of deadly sanctuary cities, and she voted in favor of giving public benefits to illegal aliens. Oh, that's the beauty. Do the people of Montana like the idea of giving public benefits to illegals? I don't, I don't think so. I know you very well. My son is here all the time, Don. He's a big fan. He's a hunter. He's a hunter. Big fan of Greg's. Big fan of Greg's. He's a good hunter, that one. You people can't believe it. He grew up in a certain nice location in New York, like Fifth Avenue. He knows more about hunting and guns and rifles and maybe anybody here. It's, 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 that's a crazy thing. That's what he loves. A few people over there say I disagree with that. But he does know a lot. Greg will tell you that. But everybody has to go out and vote for Greg. And finally, it is my great honor to introduce the next United States Senator from Montana. Matt Rosendale. Come on up, Matt. Come on up. Great guy. Big success. Highly respected.
Good evening, Montana. President Trump is making history again here in Montana, by golly. This is his third trip to Montana, and that does set a record. This is one for the history books, again. I want to take a moment to thank our veterans and all of our military for their great service to our great nation. You kept your promises, and I will work tirelessly every day to make good on the promises that our nation made to you. Mr. President, thank you for your support and for keeping your promises to the people of Montana. You are making America great again. And if we want to keep America great, then we need everyone here to get out and vote. <laughs> President Trump and all of his policies are on the line. So let's make history and retire John Tester and send President Trump the help he needs. Let's remember, it was John Tester who cast the deciding vote on Obamacare and got your premium skyrocketing. I will never give up on repealing and replacing Obamacare. We must have health care that we can actually afford. And I will make sure to always protect those with pre-existing conditions. Remember, when John Tester talks about supporting the Second Amendment, understand that he voted for liberal judges who will take your guns away. I'm endorsed by the NRA with an A rating. And all John Tester could muster up was a D. That record speaks for itself. John Tester does not stand with us on border security. He supports amnesty, catch and release, and sanctuary cities. Well, I'm running to help our president secure the border, deport the criminals, in sanctuary cities and build that wall. I like the wall. We're gonna build. President Trump deserves a senator from Montana that will support his Supreme Court nominees, not oppose them 100% of the time like John Tester has done. No thanks to John Tester, we now have two good men and two great judges on the Supreme Court, Neil Gorsuch and Brett Kavanaugh. Folks, John Tester has been too wrong for too long. We can't let John Tester and the radical liberal resistance win this November. If they win, they'll go after President Trump and his agenda. We can't let that happen. We need everyone in this hangar and across the state to get up and do their part to win this race. Ballots have dropped. I encourage everyone to please cast your vote and to turn them in as soon as possible. Tell your friends, your family, and your neighbors to get out and vote. I pledge to always put Montana first, and I will stand in strong support of President Trump 
because the work that he's doing really is making America great again. Thank you, Montana. Thank you, President Trump. May God bless each and every one of you and these great United States of America. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. And I have to say, a vote for Tester is a vote that really is going to count. It's going to count for you. He's replacing far left with common sense, and we really have to get out. We are looking to have some success, where right now it's so impossible. We have to get Schumer and Pelosi. We have to move them around. We have to get them out. Our new star, Maxine, we have to get them out. There's a lot of bad things happening. I don't know, you know, you see what they do, you see what they think, and you almost say, like, can it really be possible? Can somebody not care about our military? Can somebody not care about so many other things that we're doing, like taking care of our vets? I mean, can somebody not care about tax cuts? They want to raise your taxes, and they don't care about crime. Think of that. Raise your taxes, and they don't care about crime. Is that really some way to get elected? How do you do that? I would never be a politician if that were my platform, I tell you. Certainly, I wouldn't be successful. But Tester says one thing to voters and then always does the exact opposite. In Washington, he talks like he's from Montana, and he votes like he's Nancy Pelosi. The only thing keeping Tester's campaign alive are millions and millions and millions of dollars from outside liberals and radical leftists who couldn't care less about Montana. They don't know anything about Montana. All they know is he's a vote for them. They don't know anything. They didn't come up here to talk to you. They just send a lot of money. It's crazy. Tester voted against tax cuts for Montana families where you benefited so much. I know how important that's been. And he voted for Obama's job-killing regulations. With those regulations, all of your energy that you take out of the ground in the cleanest way and that makes our nation wealthy, you couldn't do it. You wouldn't be allowed to do it. All of the miners that are here, all of the people that are here, all of the steel workers, you wouldn't have your jobs back. You wouldn't have jobs. We were going in the wrong direction. When I came in, we were going down. And now we just did 4.2, and everyone's saying, how did that happen, right? GDP, 4.2. And on immigration, Tester's record can be summarized in two simple words, open borders, open borders. Think about it. Think about it. How about this guy in California? I have to say, look, I'm sure he's a nice guy. Nice guy, young guy. They say, oh, someday he wants to be president. Oh, please, let him run. But how about this guy running for governor, California? He wants open borders, and he wants to take care of everyone's health care, everyone's medical costs, right? He wants to put more gas taxes on, where they just have a lot. But he wants to take care of everybody. So open borders, the whole world is going to go to California. And they owe about $15 zillion. They owe more money than anybody knows. It's not even possible for them. And he's asking everybody in the world, just come on in. Open borders. We're going to take care of your health care. We're going to take care of your schools. We're going to take care of everything. I mean, is, I mean, give me a break, right? No, I saw this platform the other day. We have a good candidate there, too. You're right. Thank you, Darren. We have a good candidate there. He's a, a, now, it's hard for a Republican to win in California because it's become, like, crazy. But all of a sudden, our Republicans making big progress. It's going to be very interesting to see what happens in that way. But that's where Tester is coming from. He voted for amnesty for illegals. 
and against the border wall on numerous occasions. He voted to let drugs in. He voted to let drugs in. That's what you're doing. You don't have the wall. You don't have a border. What you have is you have infiltration of drugs like you've never seen. We fight so hard. We just had a big victory with the post office so that we can see drugs coming in from China, fentanyl, and other places. Tester voted against Kate's law, legislation to stop criminal illegal aliens from repeatedly breaking into our country. This guy came in five times, and then you know what happened. Tester voted against enhanced vetting for refugees. I said enhanced vetting, and people said, oh, what a terrible term. I don't think it's terrible. We want to have people come into our country, but they have to come in based on merit, not based on a lottery. We need people. We need people. Our employment rate's one of the lowest, as I said over 50 years. We need people to work in the companies. Japan, I was speaking to Prime Minister Abe the other day. They're opening up new car factories and plants in Michigan, in Ohio, in Pennsylvania, in Kentucky. At my very strong urging, because we have a massive trade deficit with Japan. We have a massive trade deficit with everybody. But we're changing it. We made the great deal for your farmers with Canada and with Mexico. And every other business, by the way. And we're not going to have our companies leaving the United States anymore. They're going to stay here, and they're going to expand in our country. And Tester voted in favor of deadly sanctuary cities. He likes sanctuary cities. John Tester would rather protect criminal aliens than American citizens, which is why he needs to be voted out of office. He does. And by the way, Matt, Matt is a really successful guy, respected by everybody. I know people that knew him from 10 years ago, long before he ever thought of this. 20 years ago, just was always a high-end, really respected guy. And he's going to be a great senator for you. He's going to be a great senator. Matt Rosendale. And Matt said, Tester has a, a D rating from the NRA. I didn't know they gave ratings that low. How can you have, OK, ready? We're in Montana. How can you have a D rating from the NRA and get votes? No, no, seriously. Did anyone know he had a D rating? I saw that. I said, well, that should be the end of that election. You know, there are some places you could have a D rating, I guess. But he has a D rating in Montana. I don't think that's going to last long. And he voted for liberal Obama judges who want to take away your Second Amendment. They do want to take it away, just in case you haven't figured that one out. That's a tough one. And one of the things that will be happening, you know, you're happy that we have two great Supreme Court justices that we just put on. You know, presidents go a long time. They never have a judge. I've had two, and it's not even two years. Think of that. Don't think of that. But under scenarios, we could have two more, three more, maybe four more. I wish everybody great health. I do. I really do. But, you know, we could have a scenario where we have more. That's why you have to be careful, because you think the two is good. That can get overridden very quickly. You think you're looking good, but — and you are. But, frankly, it can be overridden very quickly. John Tester joined the shameful Democrat mob, and we're calling it a mob now. A lot of people are calling it. These people are starting to think of it as a mob, and voted against Kavanaugh, voted against I guess. I didn't even know. Did he vote against Justice Gorsuch? He did. How do you vote against him? Right? Top student at Harvard. Top student at Columbia. Top student at Oxford. Oxford. And they vote against him? How do you do that? And he's just, like, led an impeccable life. Justice Kavanaugh, number one in his class at Yale. I mean, these are extraordinary people. And they had a great life. Look, it's not about grades or marks or and it's a great it's just one thing but these people have led incredible lives and in the case especially of justice Kavanaugh, the lies that were made up the stories that came out 
And he didn't, he honestly, I'm pretty good at this stuff. He honestly never heard of this stuff. He never heard of it. It was a big con job. You've heard me say that. It was a con job. See, with me, they're doing con jobs too, but at least I'm sort of, that's been, my whole life I've been people, I expect like things like this. They're giving a big, yeah, witch hunt. They're doing a big con job, but on him, I don't think he was expecting that. When I said, when I shook his hand, I have to tell you, I've never told this, I shook his hand. And I said, Brett, congratulations, I've chosen you. And I have a list of 23 people or so that are phenomenal, top students, top everything, top judges, all judges, I think, all judges. Doesn't have to be a judge, by the way, but there's something nice about putting judges on the Supreme Court, right? I don't know, somehow, I think putting a businessman would be nice, or a woman. How about a businesswoman? But, but something nice about you. Does it have to be a judge, would you believe it? But I shook his hand, I'll never forget it. I shook his hand, and I said, Brett, you're like so good educationally. You're a great scholar. You're talented, incredible wife, credible daughters. Your life has been amazing. Don't forget, six checks until the 7th from the FBI, flawless. I said, Brett, congratulations. This is going to be a piece of cake. <laughs> I meant it. I said, this is going to go so fast. It's going to be so easy. You are perfect. You are something special. And he suffered. He suffered needlessly by vicious people like Feinstein, like, remember? Do you think she leaked? She leaked. She leaked. Remember that? No, I, I didn't leak. Remember? Remember? Senator John Cornyn, great guy from Texas, he asked a question. Did you leak? She was startled because she was unprepared. No, I, I no, uh, did I, uh, what? <laughs> did I leak? No, well, no, we didn't leak, no. No, oh, no, we didn't leak. That was the worst body language I think I've ever seen. Remember, remember John Lovitz, the liar. Remember John Lovitz? Yeah, yeah, I'm a businessman. Uh, that's right. I, I went to, yeah, yeah, I went to Harvard. Yeah, that's right, I went to Harvard. I'm a businessman. That was like a female version of John Lovett. And then you had Spartacus, right? That's not Spartacus. I know him for a long time. You know, I don't want to speak badly about him, though, because, you know, I want most of these people, I think all of them, to get through the process. They're all fighting to run against us. And I don't want to hit them so hard that they don't make it. Because maybe they'll find somebody of talent. So far, there's nobody on the list. So I don't want to kill him. I don't want to do it. It's too early to be doing it. But he didn't do well at Newark, New Jersey. He ran it right the hell into the ground. And that's what he'd do with our country. So you have a lot of them. I'll go over a couple of more names, but no, I won't. How about, how about Sleepy Joe Biden? Sleepy Joe. Remember, he challenged me to a fight, and that was fine. And when I said he wouldn't last long, he'd be down faster than Greg would take him down. He'd be down so fast. Remember? Faster than Greg. I'd have to, I'd have to go very fast. I'd have to immediately connect. But so he challenges me to a fight, and the fake news said, oh, isn't that cute? That's so wonderful. Remember, he says gonna t he would like to take me behind the barn if he were younger, we, you know. So he challenges me to a fight, and it's fine. I said, he shouldn't do that because I'd take him down so fast. And they said, what a vicious statement made. How vicious. He's talking about fighting. What a vicious statement. Do you believe this? That's why it's the fake news. I responded so nicely, and they, they made a big deal out of it, but that's okay. And John Tess led the Democrat mob in the effort to destroy the reputation of a great man, Admiral Ronnie Jackson. Now, Admiral Jackson, I got to know well. 
He's a doctor, in addition to being an admiral. He's a handsome, wonderful father. His son had just graduated high in his class at Annapolis, incredible young man, beautiful family, incredible wife. And Tester said things about him which were a disgrace. And I say the people of Montana would not stand for it. What he said about Ronnie Jackson, he was the doctor for President Bush, for President Obama, and for President Trump. And he was high quality. And it's my fault. I said, Admiral, how would you like to head up the VA? I want somebody great. You're an admiral. You're a leader. And he's 50 years old. He never had a problem in his whole life. A little bit like Justice Kavanaugh. You know, really a very fine, high-quality, handsome guy. Never had a problem. And he said, sir, I had never thought of it, but I'll do whatever your wish is, sir. He didn't really want it. He didn't really want it. And he might not have been qualified, but here's a doctor at a high level. And he's a man that everybody respected. I saw that. And respect is so important. And I know he'd do a good job, and he'd put his heart into it. He's very smart. But he said, sir, if you'd want me to do it. He really didn't. He was all set, 50 years old. He was going to get a second star. He was going to retire and go into running a big hospital system or something. He was all set. But he didn't want to disappoint me. So he said, sir, if you'd like me to do it, I will do it. I said, well, I'll tell you what, Ronnie, you'll be fantastic. He would have done a great job. And I announced that he was going to be my choice. And he was attacked so viciously, so violently by John Tester, like I've never seen before. True. All lies, all made up stuff. Remember knocking at somebody's door at two o'clock in the morning. Remember that? Knock it. And I checked with Secret Service. Did that happen? No, sir, it didn't. They checked it. Sir, that didn't happen. They came in. I want to know. Sir, it didn't happen. Didn't even come close to happening. I think he wasn't even there. They made up a series of lies that were horrible. And John Tester led the group. That's really why I'm here. It's not that we need the vote so badly. I think we're going to do very nicely in the Senate, I hope. I think we should pick up seats. But I have, first of all, I have a lot of respect for the man that's running, Matt. But, but also, also I'm here because I can never forget what John Tester did to a man that's of the highest quality. You would have loved this man in this state. He'd be one of you. He'd be one of you. And so I said, I got to come. I got to come here. I got to help. Because what he did was unfair. What he did, what he did was vicious. What he did was as they did with Judge Kavanaugh. Same thing. Same thing. Almost, almost, if this is believable, worse. And he sat and he didn't know what hit him. He didn't know what hit him. To which I originally said, welcome to the world of Washington, D.C. Isn't this a lovely place? But this was a, an innocent, wonderful man who's led a life that's incredible, and he was so badly hurt. And so I had to come here and tell you that story. What happened, and we've had it checked out so carefully, and the Secret Service guys are fantastic, and I wanted a full report. I wanted a full report. Dr. Ronnie Jackson, special man. Tester doesn't share your values. He shares the values of the Feinsteins and the Cory Bookers, and how about Pocahontas, Elizabeth Warren. You know, the one good thing about her test is that there was so little. She had less than the average American. I used to say, I have more Indian blood in me than she does, and I have none. I used to say. And I was right. But the only good thing she did, I think she probably disqualified because she made a fool out of herself, but I think the only good thing she did, I can't call her Pocahontas anymore. Right? I came up with the name Pocahontas, and they once said, you must apologize for that. I said, why? 
Well, it's not nice what you're doing. I said, okay, I'd like to apologize to the real Pocahontas. But not to the fake, not to the fake Pocahontas. Not to the fake Pocahontas. But it's true, she has so little Indian, but she has none that I cannot call her Pocahontas anymore. But if you don't mind, I'll continue. Do you mind? Because it'll show everybody what a phony she is. If you vote to elect a Republican House and a Republican Senate, we will continue to cut your taxes, cut your regulations, raise your income, and make our country great again. That's happening. We will protect Medicare and Social Security. And Democrats will destroy your Social Security, and they will destroy your Medicare. We will continue confirming judges who interpret the Constitution as written. We will fully secure the border. We will pass Kate's Law, stop sanctuary cities, stop catch and release, and visa lottery, and chain migration. And we will keep the criminal drug dealers and terrorists the hell out of our country. We will lift millions of our citizens from welfare to work, dependence to independence, and from poverty to prosperity. For years, you watched as your leaders apologized for America. They apologized. Now you have a president who is standing up and proud, but standing up for America. We are standing up for your values. We are standing up for Montana. And we are proudly standing up for our great national anthem. But to continue this incredible momentum, I need you to get your friends, get your family, get your neighbors, get your co-workers, and get out and vote for Greg Gianforte and Matt Rosendale. These are great people. A vote for a Republican Congress is a vote for more jobs, more wealth, and more products made right here, like the old days, in the USA. It is a vote to respect our laws and to respect the heroes of law enforcement. They do a great job. And a vote for Republicans is a vote to reject the Democrat politics of hatred and anger and division, and to celebrate the greatness and the glory of being American. Loyal citizens like you help build this country and together, we are taking back our country, returning power to you, the American people. And that's what's happening. That's what happened almost two years ago. This great state was settled by tough pioneer men and even tougher pioneer women. By the way, they keep saying, will he do well with women? Remember last time, they said the same thing. We did, <laughs> we did very well with women. I think I probably won because of women. I hate to tell you, men. Remember, now they're starting the same thing. It's like a replay. Will he do well? Women, by the way, what do they want? They want security, both real security and economic security. They don't want to have criminals all over the place. They want to be able to have a great family and raise a great family. They want great education for their family and their kids. I'm the one that gives you that. They don't, they don't give it to you on the other side, Bob. And we're giving you already better choices for health care. I got rid of the individual mandate, which is the worst thing in Obamacare. And we're running the remnants of Obamacare before it expires completely. And you notice your premiums are going up less than they've ever gone up. 
because we're doing a real job. We had the votes to repeal and replace, and somebody disappointed us a little bit. But we'll get another shot. I'll tell you what, as Matt said, it'll happen. Get us a couple of votes. But these are pioneer women who braved the wilderness and defied the dangers to build a life and a home and a family. These are great women. The men are okay, too. Not great, but they're okay. <laughs> the men are okay. What the? The women are exceptional. They didn't have a lot of money. They didn't have a lot of luxury. But they all had one thing in common. They loved their families. They loved their country. And they loved their God. These courageous Montana patriots did not shed their blood, sweat, and tears so that we could sit at home while others try to erase their legacy and destroy our proud, proud, proud American heritage. Didn't do it. For the sake of our freedom and for the sake of our children, we are going to work, we are going to fight, and we are going to win, win, win. Remember I told you that. I've been telling you that for a long time. We're winning again. Our country is respected again. I can tell you, I meet the leaders of other countries. They say, Mr. President, congratulations. You know that we have the hottest economy, as big as we are. We were going down. We have the hottest economy on Earth. People are moving back in. We're winning again. We're respected again. We will not bend. We will not break. We will never give in. We will never give up. We will never back down. We will never surrender. And we will always fight on to victory. Because we are American and our hearts bleed red, white, and blue. You know that. We are one people. We are one family. And we are one glorious nation under God. And together, we will make America wealthy again. We will make America strong again. We will make America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you, Montana. Thank you. Thank you very much. And there you go, President Trump just wrapping up his speech, speaking to thousands at the Minuteman Aviation Center near the Missoula International Airport. The president called it a great crowd and thanked the state for their support in his presidential election. They did this one a little bit different than the last two rallies that were held in the state. There was a brief appearance by Greg Gianforte near the middle of the speech there. And they spoke a little bit about Kathleen Williams and her voting record. And he pushed for voters to go out and support Gianforte again. And then um, brought up Matt Rosendale, who gave a small speech and went after uh, John Tester's voting record, Obamacare, immigration, urged voters to give the president the help he needs to get some of his initiatives passed and taken care of. And they also went after Tester's rating from the NRA. He claims that Tester gets a D while he gets an A, and that got quite a stir from the crowd um, supporting gun rights. Uh, immigration also dominated most of the speech, and then he's assuring Montanans that the wall is in the works, and they just need to secure that southern border, and he hopes that more Republicans in the House and Senate can help speed up that process. Still going around waving now, talking to all the folks there that are still clapping and waving their signs. It's been quite a sight, and he even mentioned the beautiful sunset that we had right behind him there. It was really a good moment to show off Big Sky Country for the president and for all these folks that have been uh, just dominating this area of town all day with traffic and all that other stuff that's been going on throughout the day. So now we are going to go ahead and toss it over to Jill Valley and Mike Dennison who have been at the venue throughout the day to hear their thoughts. Jill and Mike. All right, President Trump just finished his speech. 
very loud in here again. He spoke for more than an hour, a little bit of a different format by bringing up the candidates in the middle of his speech. It was really a campaign speech for both Greg Gianforte and for Matt Rosendale. I think the night we heard, uh, a lot of things we heard before when he appeared in Great Falls and in Billings, but one thing he said that he hadn't said before, the reason he came here was because he was angry about Ronnie Jackson getting nominated for the Veterans Administration and blamed Tester for coming out with allegations against him. He almost acted like it was an afterthought just the fact that Wolfdale and James Fortune were running. But, you know, we heard immigration, we heard talk about Kavanaugh, the Supreme Court, Unlike all the red meat issues that we have come to expect from the president and the Republicans who are running. And as I was watching the crowd, they were mesmerized the whole time by what the president was talking about. He does a very good job at getting the crowd excited. They cheered at all the right times. They held their signs up at all the right times. He got yelled at a couple of times as well. So in every sense, it really was a political rally really supporting people to go out and vote Republican. Well, it was interesting. He didn't really talk about Tesla until about 30, 40 minutes into the speech. Then he's speeding up on a lot. And one thing we didn't talk about early was how close is this race. Uh, we know it's within two or three points. Uh, we have a poll that's coming out next week to show us how close it is going to that poll. And I was also interested in how often you mentioned Gian Forte. I think he's looking at that race too and thinking that thing will be closer too. And just for the attendees here today, I think they got exactly what they wanted. They wanted to see President Trump. He delivered a long speech that got them very fired up. Of course, now we'll see what happens on November 6th. What he's talking about and his support for Republican candidates would be enough to get the scales in the favor of the candidates in the party. All right, thanks, Jill and Mike. We appreciate all the efforts from our staff, our, our field reporters, and also our crew today working really hard out there to get that coverage. We will now get you back to your regular scheduled programming. Please join us on CW at 9 o'clock for our statewide newscast and then on your local MTN stations at 10 o'clock. Have a good night.